What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So we found out a bit more information about Nintendo's, uh, their, their Nintendo Direct that they're gonna do for E3. Not only what could be in it, but also how long it's gonna be. And it seems like it's gonna be a longer than average Direct, I would say. I mean, it seems about right for E3, but I guess technically it's even longer than other E3s we've had recently, even when they showed a ton of Smash Bros. And then it seems like Microsoft is pointing that out for some reason. We're gonna talk a bit about that. Uh, we also saw THQ Nordic still going crazy with remakes. That's right, not remasters, remakes. And then Suda51 wants us to remember there's a, there could be something from, from him this E3 as well. As always, guys, enjoy these videos. Make sure you hit the like button, it does help out, and get subscribed as we're into E3. Things are all over the place, and I'll keep you guys up to date. And if you follow me on Twitter, you also get all kinds of updates there as well. We're actually start today with Final Fantasy 7 Remake because we had some uh, news break late last night for its release date. That's right, we actually have the release date for the game. It's coming out March 3rd, 2020. This was actually unveiled at the Final Fantasy concert they're holding in LA, and they told everyone there in attendance that you can pick up what we assume to be episode one or part one of two or three. We're not really sure how many parts it's going to be. We, we no, it's gonna be episodic, but the first part apparently will be dropping at the beginning of March, and that is very exciting. Now, I kind of thought it might be a holiday game, but now that the holiday is clear, maybe that's when the Avengers game comes out. That's kind of what we're thinking now, but I think March makes sense for Final Fantasy VII Remake because they could technically do part one in March, and then they could follow it up with part two, possibly in the holidays, or if it's a full year later, well, that'll be their their uh, their final quarter, or quarter one, or quarter four game, depending on where they need to put it. But I think March is okay. If it's not hitting the holidays, at least we'll get it early 2020. Oh, and while we're on the topic of the, the Avengers game that we're gonna, I, I assume, see tonight at their their conference or their, their presentation, I guess it's just a pre-recorded thing, kind of like last year where we had the Quiet Man. But this time we're gonna see, I assume, more Final Fantasy VII Remake and the Avengers game. And it looks like outside of their big building, that's like their big thing that they're showing off right now, and we actually got a look at the platforms, and one of them might kind of surprise you. Now, it's coming to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the PC, which sounds about right. But the other platform, I guess you'd call it that, is Stadia. Yeah, Google actually seems to have uh, picked up, uh, I guess, the game for their streaming platform. They didn't seem to mention it that I remember in during their conference they did, their own thing, their own presentation last week. So this seems to be new, and it's interesting that we have to start looking, by the way, for the Stadia logo whenever we have a game unveiled, because it could kind of get, you know, snuck in there at the end where you see like a PlayStation symbol or a Nintendo symbol. Uh, maybe you gotta see the Stadia symbol down there too. So interesting stuff there, and we'll find out more tonight. I'm definitely excited for Square because I think they're bringing it this year. Oh, and we had one part of the Nintendo Direct essentially guaranteed to us at this point, so we kind of know what's gonna happen here, and it shouldn't surprise you, but I guess it's good to have confirmation, right? And that's that we will have a new Smash Bros. character unveiled. Sakurai himself actually went on camera and said, hey, we're gonna show you a new Smash Bros. character at E3 for Nintendo Direct. And this was actually during the Smash Bros. tournament that they were holding the World Championships. At the end, he went ahead and told everyone that you can look forward to a new character on Tuesday. And again, most of us figured this would be the case. Now, I do think there's still a possibility, as we've talked about on the podcast and everything, that there could actually be two characters shown there, one that's um, available a bit more immediately, you know, in the near future, and then one that's a bit further off, just to kind of get a tease going and get you kind of understanding what's gonna happen, because remember, they still have four more characters they need to show, so they actually might need to kind of accelerate a bit with the releases after Joker being out now, but either way, exciting stuff. I think Nintendo's gonna have a good time, and now we're actually gonna go, as we go into some of the bigger uh, news, we're actually gonna roll into that. All right, so now we've got the quick news out of the way. We're gonna get right into Nintendo's E3 because they put out a tweet, as you're seeing here, and it does say, don't forget to tune into Nintendo Direct. All right, just in case anyone forgot, there's gonna be a Nintendo Direct, guys, you know, E3 and all that. Uh, Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern, for a video presentation featuring around 
40 minutes of information about upcoming Nintendo Switch games releasing in 2019. Now, I assume they're saying around because the uh, the Japanese uh, Direct is different at times. They have extra stuff. Remember, we've seen like uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey streaming, you know, added in there. Fantasy Star Online 2 was added in there, which, hey, you got an Xbox. I guess we can play it next year. But uh, yeah, that's why they're saying around, I assume. And then, of course, it could run later. It could run longer. It depends. You might, Maybe there's like an issue with the streaming. You never know. But 40 minutes is, uh, that's a pretty good amount of time for a Direct that does not appear to have any one focus. So last year, we had an obscene amount of time dedicated to Smash Bros. Some would say uh, too much time, as uh, it, it kind of turned into mostly a Smash Direct and then a little bit of a Nintendo Direct. But, but this year seems a bit different because we're expecting quite a bit this year. Obviously, Animal Crossing is like the big thing people are talking about right now. And keep in mind, it's 40 minutes, but we already had a Mario Maker 2 Direct prior to this. We already had a Pokemon Direct prior to this, and it's still 40 minutes long. So if they had the other stuff in here, this might have been like an hour long Direct. I don't think anyone would have complained about that, but... It at least makes sense, I guess, to get that stuff out of the way. And remember, there's still like three days of Treehouse with one of them seems to be dedicated to like indie games. So you'll probably see some announcements there as well. It seems like Nintendo is actually going to have a larger E3 when it comes to, I assume, quantity of games. Uh, you're going to have to judge for yourself on quality because, again, there'll be some indie games there that maybe you're not feeling, but then you see Animal Crossing and you get really excited. So uh, a lot of fun stuff, at least. And then there's one thing that was kind of interesting that was uh, that was pointed out by a lot of people. Microsoft put out their Xbox E3 schedule. Basically, events you want to keep an eye on because Microsoft would be uh, participating in some way. They'll list uh, Ubisoft, for example, right? Because a lot of Ubisoft games, yeah, will be on the Xbox. Same with Square, right? That makes sense. Bethesda and Nintendo... That's right, they list Nintendo's briefing, not Nintendo's Treehouse, by the way, but Nintendo's briefing specifically... I'm not really sure why they would do that unless they had some sort of participation in Nintendo's Direct that they will have. Now, you could go crazy and say it could be, you know, Halo on the Switch. I'm going to be much more concerned about it and tell you that it's probably Ori is what it is. You know, it's probably Ori and the Blind Forest on the Switch. Most likely that's what this is referencing, but I guess you never really know. I mean, technically they could also show that Minecraft game that was also announced during the Microsoft uh, uh, their, their own briefing that would count, I guess, cause they're going to be trying to market it. They might even play in the treehouse, but to, to see it listed there would be odd unless they had a bit more of an impact there. Maybe it, maybe it's true. Maybe people are expecting a Banjo Kazooie reveal for smash. That's possible. Um, I don't want to guess too much there because Banjo was nowhere to be found at the Microsoft presentation. And I thought he would be. So we'll see. Either way, uh, interesting stuff there, nonetheless. But uh, hey, we'll find out with Nintendo. It's going to be very exciting going into that presentation in the treehouse. Next up, we got Destroy All Humans. Uh, THQ Nordic is on a tear right now. I said this before. They keep going back and grabbing games that uh, you might actually remember from your childhood, your early teens, just older systems that we're very fond of. THQ Nordic is doing a great job going back, getting them, and remaking them. This is this is interesting because for a while there in the beginning, they were just remastering games, right? They weren't doing a lot to change them. They were just kind of smoothing out the visuals. Think, think of like Sphinx, right? Like we played that and I enjoyed it because I liked that game, but they didn't do a lot to change it up. But here we are now with SpongeBob getting a full remaster or remake, I'm sorry, full remake. And here we are now, Destroy All Humans, the first one, getting a full remake. They put out an entire trailer that was actually pretty funny. It was, it was a good trailer. And then they uh, talked a bit about, I, I guess, it coming out in 2020. And it's coming out for the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, and the PC. Nothing about the Switch, which I think threw a lot of people, including myself, because THQ Nordic's been pretty good about Switch support. So I'm not really sure what happened there. Maybe it's coming later, I'm not sure, but I'm sure it's gonna target 4K and everything. And we've seen some games go to the other platforms and then the Switch later, like Red Faction, which is coming this summer to the Switch. Something that I and I think a lot of people figured. So just because Destroy All Humans isn't going to the Switch now doesn't mean it won't go later, especially since the studio behind SpongeBob with THQ Nordic is are the ones working on Destroy All Humans, so maybe they're spread thin. It's, it's hard to say there, right? Maybe because they're working on SpongeBob Switch version, they're not working on Destroy All Humans. 
who knows? It, it's hard to say. But Seeing Destroy All Humans coming back, a game I played back on the original Xbox, I remember. I, I know it was also on the PS2, but I definitely remember playing on the original Xbox, and I really liked that game. It was it was this really funny game where you played as uh, the aliens coming down and literally destroying all humans. And it was it was pretty fun. It was, it was weird at the time, but... It's still a good time playing that on the Xbox. I just, I like what THQ's Nordic, Nordic is doing here, and I'm looking forward to that release next year. Next up, let's talk about Bethesda. Uh, Bethesda had their E3 conference, and I have to say, it wasn't very good. Like, I, I was watching it, and it was kind of boring at times. It didn't start off well, and something was wrong with that crowd. I don't know what it was. Some people were saying it were it was employees, uh, they were paid, they were way too excited for everything that was going on right then. I, I, I didn't understand. People were cheering at everything. It didn't matter, they were cheering. When uh, when uh, just random developers who were coming on stage were getting standing ovations, I, I just, I knew something was up and I don't know what it was. Uh, Todd Howard did show up, kind of made fun of the whole Fallout 76 thing a bit then took off he was gone <laughs> he was out of there quick like he did not stick around uh and really there wasn't as much there wasn't as much there as i was hoping there would be i i mean maybe i was hoping for starfield i i thought about it more and i said you know what they're not gonna show starfield they're not gonna show elder scrolls 6 that's what everyone really wanted to see a lot of people are talking about wanting to see starfield and i just i i just didn't think it was in the cards this year this year kind of felt like a gap year for bethesda i mean they showed us a lot of cell phone stuff. <laughs> they showed us Orion, which will help developers work their games into streaming services, which is fine, because that's, again, kind of where we're heading with, with some of this gaming stuff, right, is game streaming. Okay, I get that, but like to show that on stage is weird. Uh, the Again, the mobile games, Commander Keen being kind of beaten up as a mobile game. Like, it didn't look great. Uh, I just... I don't, I don't get what was going on here with Bethesda. Now, some highlights, okay, included uh, Doom. Doom Eternal looks awesome. Like, it looks really, really good. I'm ready for that. I was already sold on the game, but they showed us more gameplay, and now I'm just even more sold on it. They also showed us a collector's edition with a helmet that I can't imagine is as good quality as they uh, tried to sell it as, but, hey, I bought the Halo helmet, so you never know. I definitely am getting Doom Eternal on uh, the Xbox and the Switch, so uh, it should be fun to check all of that out. We also saw a new game from uh, from Tango, and it was, for, it was from the, obviously, developers of Evil Within, and it's called Ghostwire Tokyo. This is from Tango Gameworks. They didn't really say much. It said it's a, it's a new kind of action-adventure game. It's, it's not like a survival horror game. Takes place in Tokyo. That was, that was kind of it, but but it, it's cool because I was originally thinking it was me uh, Evil Within three, and it wasn't. It's something different. So I, I guess that's at least kind of neat. Also, Fallout seventy six is getting NPCs. Uh, that for some reason was a standing ovation as well. I, I guess uh, Battle Royale also fifty two player. Sure, that won't break at all. You know, first day that, that'll run very smoothly there, and. That was kind of it. Like they did some Elder Scrolls online stuff, but there wasn't anything big and wow and amazing. I mean, the best announcement they had is that Doom is coming this year, November 22nd. So excited to pick that up this year. That's my that's my game of choice from that entire conference that they showed. Absolutely excited for that one. Otherwise, though, I don't know. It just wasn't a great it just wasn't a great conference. It was kind of boring at times. It just went on and on. And I just I I felt like I was only really there for two announcements. Really, one of them was just Doom. The other one was from, obviously, Tango Gameworks. And that was kind of it. Unfortunately, not a great showing for Bethesda. And our last bit of news, let's talk about Pseudo51. He actually posted this picture here on Twitter saying, go to E3. That was on the 9th of June, and it appears to be something to do with No More Heroes. Now, I look at this, and Suda51 is heading into E3. He's teased it so much. We had uh, Travis Strikes again, it wasn't the best game, but I, I think it was passable. I think it probably made enough money. It's also going, of course, to PlayStation 4, PC, so that'll help out. I'm hoping this is finally it for Suda51, and he gets to make No More Heroes 3. Now, we also uh, saw pictures a little while ago of Ubisoft for some reason on his Twitter account, and I have a feeling 
there's a chance that we see No More Heroes 3 possibly published by Ubisoft. There's a, I just wanna put this out there. It's a possibility that No More Heroes 3 could be at Ubisoft's presentation or it could be at Nintendo's presentation. Suda51 is announcing something. I don't think it's Travis Strikes Again DLC. I think it's a full on game. So it's something to look forward to. I really want Suda51 to have that big announcement at E3 with No More Heroes 3. I think people would get excited. If it's at Nintendo's presentation, people will get psyched. I think if it's at Ubisoft's, it'll be excited as well. And you know what? If he puts it on all platforms, I think that's good for him because, of course, it'll help him get more money to probably continue the series that he obviously loves so much. So, yes, excited to see what Suda51 has for us at E3. And, yes, I hope it's No More Heroes 3. And we'll finish up today with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here, from Darkon219. What do you think about whether introduction of 5G could help Stadia? So, I think the introduction of 5G, if it is what it's supposed to be cracked up to be, could massively help game streaming, especially for mobile devices, like phones, obviously. And I think as we get further and further in, it's very possible that the next Switch could have some kind of 5G just built in. I think it'd be really cool, by the way, to have a, a 5G enabled Switch or one that's at least enabled through mobile networks and you can decide if you want to use it or not, you know, pay for it and all of that. But I think the, the option of it being there and having an always online Switch, always connected, is a really cool idea, especially if 5G works the same. Stadia, uh, xCloud, anything that uses game streaming would benefit, but we need to know a lot about 5G. Again, data caps, right? Because we know what <laughs> what xCloud, well, we know what Stadia would chew through. I assume xCloud is probably gonna be similar when it comes to 4K streaming and everything, but yes, 5G would be massive. And I'm looking forward to uh, if we do see some of these game streaming things run on it. And it, again, it comes out and it evolves a little bit. And we do eventually have a Switch that's just always 5G. You know, we have our phones we can take out of our pocket and sure you can play xCloud or Stadia. But right now where we're kind of seated at home, I mean, I, I, it kind of makes more sense to me anyway, just to get a console and play these games and have them locally. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go to here for Newsway. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's Bethesda's E3 conference. What'd you think about it? Maybe you liked it. I'm curious if, if you did, what you really liked about it, or maybe you, you're put to sleep by it. Let me know about that as well. Also, what about, what about Nintendo's presentation? 40 minutes long. Seems pretty good. And then why is Microsoft talking about it as well? Also very interesting. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.